encyclical letter et porti in fury non prevalbuntid versus im of his holiness pope james the first that the time of the divine reckoning is near is evident by the situation in this world and how perverse it has become in its obstinacy and even denial of the revealed truth which is nothing else but catholic tradition and so the today so perverted free will of men will work only the wrath of god to come so much the faster and on the other hand obedience of those who will strive to become truly Catholic will be rewarded by God in their admission and protection within the bosom of the divine institution Roman Catholic Church, outside of which there is no salvation, as outside of this true Church of Christ our Lord, there is no truth nor justice of God preserved and protected, this encyclical letter of the rightful sovereign pontiff speaks about this situation and the remedies and consequences thereof. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against her, says our Lord in the Holy Gospel, St. Matthew 16, 17, and so, as we are tasked by the office of the supreme pastor of his sheep, to be always engaged in our service to our Lord, and more imminently so at this time of such a calamity that has befallen his genuine and only Catholic Church, over which, unworthy as we are, he himself has nevertheless placed us to watch over his remaining flock, and defend the divinely revealed Catholic religion, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, against our common enemies, carnal and infernal. Therefore, as the devil himself is attacking the truth of the Catholic faith and the genuine divine institution Catholic Apostolic Church, through his most trusted agents, the enemies of the same true Catholic Church, and as they are striving to destroy the true Catholic religion, with all malice and wickedness, and using various heretical poisons at their disposal, as their infernal master is supplying them, so the divine help against these foes is supporting and protecting the divinely revealed truth of the Catholic faith, the genuine Catholic tradition, over which the gates of hell will not prevail, and no such victory of the servants of hell against the bride of Christ our Lord, the true Catholic Church, is ever possible. And yes, we must be vigilant in this and any other regard, as the safety of the souls entrusted to our care and their protection are at stake, and more secured that safety must be today, when the times of such perversity and apostasy in this world is evident and not at all diminishing in magnitude, but in truth, these evils are increasing every day more and more. And this absolutely horrifying outcome, and in fact, judging from the authority of the Church, incomprehensible as such, we shudder at this observation, that, confessing the genuine Catholic faith has become so repugnant to this world of sin, that its diabolically orchestrated and achieved perversion and seduction of mind and soul, is so strikingly apparent and visible, that nothing and nobody can possibly hide it and conceal it in any way whatsoever. Therefore, as the rightful possessor of the keys to the heavenly kingdom, by the divine right of apostolic succession and the true episcopal dignity on our soul, by the mercy and gift of God our Lord, we, by his divine help, will continue in this sacred task to defend and protect the Catholic religion and the Holy Mother Roman Catholic Church against such enemies and false and heretical doctrines, which are themselves so prevalent in today's times, as the devil, their concocter and evil promoter, through his collaborators the notorious heretics and apostates, had succeeded in installing these false and pernicious doctrines of hell into the minds and hearts of those, who, even though they put their claim to the name of Catholic, they are none of our Lord's sheep, nor do they profess the genuine Catholic faith, but the heretical disseminated lies of Satan instead. How the world has been led into its own mire of sin and the self-delusion of false religions practiced and believed. By our true observation and certain knowledge, of the progress of this perversion in the world, the perverted manners and morality so slackened that the word mortal sin had become this world's very nature and essence, subjected by doing so, and being so, to the tyrannical yoke of Satan, so we clearly see the outcome and divine punishment coming to them who are such degraded and ruined souls themselves. For not loving the truth, the result is that the soul is subjected to the tyrannical mastery of the devil and cannot free herself from that yoke until full repentance of the false beliefs and corrupted doctrines is secured, in mind and deed, and it is effaced from the soul by her actual solemn renouncement of them, and no matter how much this thought of willing to be truly Catholic is gaining ground in the actual mind and soul, without the act of renouncing it and repenting of it, 
or at least to have the desire of doing so, cleansing of all those heretical perversions that were believed and professed before, the necessary divine grace will not enter such a soul to cleanse it thoroughly, by that perfect contrition for the sins committed, with the necessary desire of the true absolution from sins in the valid sacrament of penance, unless God himself will do it alone, which is nothing short of a genuine miracle, and based on the already mentioned and fully observed fact, this is extremely highly unlikely to take place in such a perverted, and by sin darkened, soul. But that we warn those who may think that God's mercy has no limits and therefore God can and will bring such souls of heretics and apostate sectarians to himself, even every one of them so, just by their sincere wish to be Catholic, that alone will never suffice and it is truly a grave mistake and total fallacy to think so, and this is because God demands action and good fruits of Catholic virtues to be practiced and professed and achieved, and the true divinely revealed Catholic faith firmly believed, then and only then, as this must be done for the everlasting honor and glory of God, when this essential prerequisite is properly in place, in the heart and mind of the penitent soul, of one who is truly and sincerely trying to convert and become genuine Catholic, and this, again, cannot be obtained by the soul's own endeavor and acts of will and intellect, but solely by the divine supernatural help from God, inciting the cooperation of such a soul with it, and only then the security of genuine conversion can and should be believed to have taken hold in the soul, but never otherwise. So let us summarize this doctrine of salvation, that once upon that road to conversion and becoming truly Catholic, the sincerity of it and firmness of will and true resolve not to quit in it, those are the essential dispositions that will engage the divine grace alongside the necessary cooperation with it, by the particular soul, and only then the results will be fruitful, for otherwise the soul of unbeliever, which are all those who would hear the truth and doctrine of salvation, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, but are not willing to bear the good fruits to God, no matter why it is so, either by negligence, or unbelief, or distrust how the divine grace works inside the soul, all these people would have God to perform for them miracles and divine help, but they themselves are not willing to give him the charitable response, which is, the good deeds and virtues produced by the genuine Catholics. And when thus indisposed and wrongly bent on receiving their helps from our Lord automatically, they are not realizing that this is a sin of presumption, if they are not willing to do their own part and claim to themselves a sort of right to obtain from God his grace and favors, as if they were not required to work out their own salvation, which is the first and foremost essence of being truly Catholic, and that, by sincerely trusting in the divine mercy but knowing their own important role. In truly securing this divine help, by being resolved to carry the daily crosses God sends them to be able to repay him for what such sinners have caused to divine justice, if this is not fully understood and realized in deeds of charity and mercy, glorifying God in them, then there is no mistake in the fact that by being resolved only on their partial inadequate understanding what is required of them and how exactly they must profess and practice the Catholic religion, their conversion will remain a fallacious myth and not their essential security of being truly Catholic. And yet, and this is the more astounding fact of them all, such souls cling to their own will, lacking the necessary humility in believing in the supreme infinite goodness of our Lord, whom will always help those who are humble and sincere in front of him, striving to please him always, as true Catholics, but these people only see what difficulty it may be to fully convert and amend, not willing to fully destroy in themselves the evil and sinful inclinations and false dispositions, which in fact hamper the infusion of the divine grace to help them out of the mire they are in, sadly so as non-Catholics but heretics and worse, so likewise, even if they realize what must be done on their part, their will is still crippled by being used to the fallacious comfort of their own inclinations and habitual state of mortal sin as such, in which deplorable state the devil wants to keep them indefinitely, which means, till they have to answer for their unrepentant sins to God in hell. This is the common ground of all heretics, blindness, and inability to act the right way to secure their true conversion, and the blindness is so strikingly apparent, that even if they are taught what their sinful defects are, they are not capable of correcting them without the supernatural and miraculous help from our Lord, 
essentially so. Divinely revealed Catholic faith, which is solely and only the centuries-old apostolic Catholic tradition, or the sentence of hell. We have so far spoken of the necessary dispositions of the converting soul, yet the willingness to be truly Catholic plays a major role in this conversion, because God himself does foresee this necessary part of the converting soul's resolve, and if this is in any way lacking, no matter what that soul will attempt to achieve, God sees the lack of perseverance and self-delusion and pride in trusting in one's own human abilities, lacking the proper understanding that without God our Lord we can do absolutely nothing, if he doesn't help then the person is truly stuck and cannot progress any further, and on the contrary, if the proud rejection of the truth of the Catholic faith is the only outcome and such a person is not even willing to learn the truth nor acknowledge it as such, then there is simply no chance to be truly converted, as then the mortal sin of heresy is what the soul's life, or rather death sentence, is and remains, and the blindness to the truth remains as well. God will not help heretics to be Catholic if they have no willingness to become truly and sincerely Catholic, and so as such, there is simply no chance to be saved at all, by rejecting the Catholic faith and the divinely given authority of the true Roman Catholic Church as the supreme guardian of the truth, with this same divinely given supreme teaching authority of the rightful sovereign pontiff at the head of the Church, them, without being humbly and sincerely subject to this authority of the Church, God will not have mercy on them, who dare to reject what he had instituted and founded and revealed, as he is the truth and the way to salvation, and therefore, as it is also written in the Holy Scripture, no liar can enter the kingdom of heaven, and every heretic is a liar in front of God, without any exception. But they who like to test the truth themselves would reply, how can this authority be proven that this particular person is truly the sovereign pontiff, and to this we reply, that just like the Pharisees have questioned our Lord God himself about the same thing, so the rightful vicar of Christ, seems that way, has to go through the same obvious heretical doubting, without them being able to grasp the fallacy of their false inquiry, as if they had the chance to pass judgment on such matters of the Catholic Church and decide for the Church who is and is not her sovereign pontiff, but we know what God had provided and why it is so, and our own work proves this point more than abundantly, as the work is not ours but comes from our Lord's supernatural help, which we have only too poorly made use of. For it is certain that an evil tree cannot bear good fruits and a good tree cannot bear evil fruits, wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them, which means, that the fruits of salvation and protection of the Catholic souls, as few as there are today, is the guiding test of our rightful possession of the supreme teaching authority of the Pope, which we do not claim, but we possess it, and this we know and do testify by our own infallible work of true guidance for the Catholics to be, or those outside, to become, truly Catholic. And if there are any difficulties, then they are being taken care of by our carefulness, so that the same is manifest to those who look at the results, but this all is not our necessity to be exercised here, but only the charitable guidance for those who are not yet sure of the truth, although the works are manifestly visible. And so it is likewise for those, who on premise reject this truth of our supreme office of the head of the Catholic Church, for then they do not have any excuse for their rejecting the truth, as they cannot claim that they don't see the works produced by our carefulness and thoroughness in patience and many times great difficulty to do so, yet the work, either of doctrinal, theological, and canonical value, is self-evident and undeniable, so to attempt to contradict it only shows the true malicious dispositions of such who would try to do so, yet they are not at all in position to judge this holy see, but one who will judge all, including those who are such, is God himself, and there are no excuses taken by him from those who are attacking his church and the supreme pastor of her, by doubts, malicious attacks and disregard for being guided towards their conversion and chance of eternal salvation. But that it is thoroughly understood, that this same Holy See has no need nor it is acceptable at all to have any such need, to become somewhat justified in front of this anti-Catholic world, we have absolutely no such desire at all, and rather take the wrong from those who would dare to judge the works that were already produced, because we solely look to please God in our poor service to Him, 
by His divine grace and undeniable help from our Lord, and this is absolutely sufficient to us in all that we do, because we look for the reward that is heavenly, and never that which is solely earthly. And it is clear to us, by observing the situation as it is, that not only the infernal snake has succeeded in incensing the minds of those who doubt and blindly disregard the truth we have so many times presented in our publications, because then such perverted souls have no excuse in front of God, if they attack the truth of the Catholic religion, which has been so many times presented by our publications, and they therefore will have to answer for their fallacious denial of the vast warnings and condemnations which have been produced by this holy see, to God himself, for all are bound to stand one day at the judgment seat of Christ our Lord, and if the judgment begins at the house of Israel, which is figuratively the Catholic Church and her members, where will the sinners, the mockers, and anti-Catholic elements etc. appear? Summary of the situation as it is today. God has not forsaken his genuine Catholic Church, as many may blindly imagine, and that this apostate novice ordo sect is not in any way in possession of the holy name of Catholic, nor in possession of any jurisdiction and authority within the Roman Catholic Church, this exact truth is our daily comfort, and that from our Lord himself, as this knowledge comes from him, of what we have so far written, and therefore there is no excuse in the heretical claims of our enemies, who declared their injustice and outright war against this holy see, by their support of our enemies, the notorious heretics and apostates, who are, none of them, Catholic at all. For it is certain to us, confirmed by the very painful experience, that such heretics wish nothing else but to destroy souls and the Catholic Church and the Catholic faith together, as this is the exact objective of their master the devil, and so they have no chance of wavering about this evil task, but must obey the wicked evil master, Satan himself, but the divine institution Roman Catholic Church stands fully protected and helped by our Lord, our divine founder, as this is exactly what he had promised, and his promises are true, as he is the truth and cannot deceive. So we ask ourselves daily, they have the churches and chapels and every pious place, but what does that bring them? Will God come to such desecrated places of their false abominable religion? Will our Lord come to people who are heretics and apostates, which means that by that very fact they are his enemies, as he is the truth and they stand for heretical lies instead? No, God will not come, period. And even if they attempt to put out a show of piety and fix all the defects they have in those perverted churches and chapels and so on, and even if they repair all the damage they have caused over the decades, and even if they attempt to restore the church, of which they are not members, so all such efforts are useless and null from the beginning, and even if they renounce their apostasy and heresy, even then it will not help them, because they must be judged and absolved, individually, not collectively, as all guilt has to be applied to particular deeds and crimes committed, solely by the judgment from this genuine holy see. But them, not having the Catholic faith, evidently so, as otherwise they would fear God's punishment for what horrendous evils they have caused and achieved over the years, these apostates and heretics most likely will not be helped by God to obtain that necessary humility to take this essential step and petition this holy see for pardon and admission into the bosom of the Catholic Church, as the crimes committed and the millions and millions of ruined and destroyed souls, all this speaks against them, but again, God can do all things and convert all and anyone, Yet it so happens, that for such extreme evils these culprits are very seldom or never helped by God to repent and amend, which means their genuine recovery from the tyrannical yoke of the devil is highly unlikely, meaning, it is impossible if they don't repent and convert. Let them, therefore, who were blinded before by these workers of evil, and join their heretical, false, and fraudulent conventicles, reflect and repent, for those who would receive such immense help from our Lord, they must realize that God only leads to the truth and repentance those who are worthy to receive it and will not neglect it, or, God forbid, reject it, and if this divine mercy is granted by our Lord, the divine grace of repentance is given to them, let them take this chance of their lifetime and use it, right away and without any delay, for otherwise they will most likely never again receive it from our Lord, 
as he only helps those who wish to know and profess the truth, as our Lord is most merciful, but within the truth of the Catholic faith and boundaries established by him through the church doctrine, dogma, and law, and never outside these boundaries. Therefore, and let this be once more understood, there is no other Christian faith but Catholic tradition, and all that do not profess it and practice it in full, will without any exception, them being severed from the unity of the universal true Catholic Church, suffer after the natural death of the body and its separation from their immortal soul, eternal punishment in the fires of hell. Forever. As God offer them his mercy based on their merit and willingness to cooperate with his grace to obtain it, and not because they say what they wish and believe what they decide is good for them, as such fallacy and invitation of heretical fabricated lies against the divinely revealed Catholic faith is never rewarded by God with their salvation, but such souls are left to their blindness and deafness and cannot be saved, even if they so desired it, because the principles of salvation are there. Own and not what comes by divine revelation and has always been taught by the Catholic Church as the divine deposit of faith, but the criteria of salvation are made by human fraudulent perverted intellect, deceived by the instigation of the devil himself, and thus such heretical poisons lead only to their eternal perdition and nothing else. And because it is a true heresy to deny, on their part, to help the genuine Catholic Church continue her divine mission of salvation of souls, in their actions and intellect, such perversion of these souls of heretics and apostates is followed by their inability to resist the evil spirit and be freed of Satan's tyrannical yoke, as in punishment of their obstinacy and refusal to be truly Catholic and to give the necessary aid and support to his Catholic Church, our Lord leaves them to their blindness and slavery to their master the devil, and thus, them not even being aware of the tragic outcome, are set for their fall into hell at the end, slaves of Satan they are, by their own fault. But the Catholic Church cannot be destroyed nor subdued and left without rightful and true members, and although today the situation is very tragic and most of those who use the name Catholic are not Catholic at all by what falsehood of religion they truly profess, yet there is still a chance of genuine conversion and learning the Catholic faith, as our Lord sees their misery and enslavement to the devil, and wishes to have mercy on them, yet only if they open their heart and soul to the truth of the Catholic faith, which means, if they renounce the false and diabolically concocted fabricated heretical religion of this apostate novice ordo sect and the heresies of the sectarians and their collaborators, as the SSPX, SSPXMC, SSPV, and on the other hand the heresies of the set of Acantists as well. Otherwise, God will remain silent and they will remain in their diabolical slavery, never helped if they neglect or deny the Catholic faith, which is solely and only Catholic tradition. To them, therefore, who see the light of this truth and hear our words of infallible doctrine, let them count it already as the necessary beginning and truly miraculous help of divine mercy on them, as otherwise they would not be able to understand the truth nor hear it and act upon it, but if they are able to do so and convert, the Catholic Church, in our person, extends them all invitations to repentance and conversion, including their valid and proper admission into the bosom of the divine institution Roman Catholic Church, for them to be in the safety of their soul, protection of the genuine sacraments of the Church, all instituted by God our Lord himself, and let such souls persevere in the truth and profession and practice of the Catholic religion, and see the fruits of these miraculous mercies of God, as that is solely what they are, miracles of divine mercy upon those who have been, or have gone, astray and were recovered as the lost sheep they used to be. For all this, we desire therefore, that such souls honestly contact this holy see for consultation of their situation and conversion, how they are to be helped so that they will learn firsthand what a immense blessing it is to be truly Catholic, how the blindness of heretics is demolished by God's grace and mercy, how his help to recover themselves all of a sudden opens the wisdom and understanding of such souls to be able to grasp their past sins and false beliefs, and how our Lord in his ultimate mercy had granted them their repentance, to be freed from the devil and his evils and tyranny, and that, such souls, by learning the genuine Catholic religion, will know by certitude of this apostolic Catholic faith, that it is the truth and nothing but the truth, it came 
and emanates and proceeds from God, the fountainhead of all truth, as he is the truth. Final exposition of the truth and justice of God. But that all is well understood within the ranks of our enemies, that we are not ignorant of their diabolical preparations and fabricated motions towards their worldwide usurpation of power over the masses of peoples living in this world, all based on their nihilistic anti-Catholic perverted ideology of the atheistic communist, un, equality, that those who presently are in possession of that secular authority and neglect to learn that the authority of this holy see of Saint Peter is far greater in dignity and power, that is to say, the divinely given authority to pull down fortifications and destroying councils, their schemes of denial of this awesome power God granted and not men, to the Catholic Church and her supreme head the true sovereign pontiff, it is contrary in their cases of their own selected electorate, and or them usurping it in untrue fabricated results of various fraudulent elections, for the purpose to deceive the world and implement what their perverted ideology declares. Which means at the end the tyranny of the Antichrist and nothing less, this all, being condemned before it comes to pass, as their total abuse of God granted authority, which, being used to inflict evil and injustice on men, is no authority at all, but tyranny and sedition of the worst kind, their atheistic perversion clearly demonstrating, in the painful history of mankind, it can do nothing for the better of the populace, but solely for the worst in the results, benefiting only those consenting to such an evil scheme. For what God had not established and not granted to be, men in their thus evil designs cannot bring to perfection themselves, nor it is possible for such godless apostate enemies of God to accomplish anything of real value, but only spiritual and carnal sufferings of those forced under their tyrannical yoke, as it is certain that when God is excluded, and this by force and evil tyrannical laws, then it is utterly impossible to reap good fruits from it, but only elevation of those who, giving consent to tyranny and atheistic nihilism become tyrants themselves, in their consent to it, and thus they firmly fall by their will and consent of their intellect into the hands of their master the devil, in the results accomplishing his evil will. And such miserable men, be they never so self-elevated in power and force, can never obtain the blessings of God upon their works, only perverted and incomplete results, bringing misery, want and suffering of various kinds to the masses they themselves have deceived into supporting them and electing them, or even worse, if they have usurped to rule the countries and peoples by force, fraud, or tyrannical mayhem, but the result remains the same, which means the same evil, utterly unjust. Godless Communism and because of the long-term plots and subversive operations conducted against the Catholic Church by these communists, the Church has been forced by these servants of Satan into the catacombs, and into her partial silence and nearly total loss of influence, there are no more genuine Catholic faithful available to help the Church to continue her divine mission of salvation of souls, only our Lord himself helping the Church and his true vicar to survive, with the bare necessary minimum, in suffering hardship and scarcity, but in truth and justice of God, which is the Catholic faith, dogma, and infallible doctrine, which can never be vanquished nor perverted at all, as God is the essence of them, and the truth and justice is his essence, and thus he is the author of the same what the Church commands and has always taught, as the only path to salvation of those who obey it, practice it, and sincerely follow its guidance and rule. And therefore only those who will not give consent to the evils of these communistic antichrists, will be helped and protected by God, in the upcoming times of evil, and on the contrary, those who plan to neglect and or have already betrayed our Lord and his true Catholic Apostolic Church, and made themselves freely into servants of this diabolical atheistic communist evil, will reap only disaster from it and at the end eternal fires of hell will swallow them up swiftly and that none may doubt these are words, by the historical context available to all, and these all well-known fruits of all tyrannies that have ever existed in the history of mankind, of which, the atheistic communism is the most evil of them all, they will successfully sever their chance of salvation, from them and those who obey such monsters, and they will at the end regret the very day they were born, as God does not take excuses at the end, and all evils will be repaid by him in due end just manner, all evil, 
which is the absence of good, will receive its due punishment from God. Given from our present exile, the catacombs, on the twelfth day of June, in the year of our Lord 2021, in the first, visible, of our pontificate. Jacobus Primo, Papa et Pontifex The End There is no other possible solution to the evil situation in this world, and to obtain the mercy and help from God, but to become truly Catholic and leave off and renounce all heresies and apostasy, and to strive with all will, all heart, and soul and all strength to become pleasing to God, which means to be true Catholics, and those, who deny this truth and only path to be spared the upcoming divine wrath and suffering and punishment, they have to know that they have their free human will, and God has all the consequences, and they are, for the disobedient and ungrateful, at the end eternal, forever in hell.